Yes, totally fine. Hi, everybody. We're here at the Treasure Box and Company. As you see this week, I've set up in a way that maybe the traffic won't be as loud behind me. That's Aria. We have Steven over here this morning, and we have Abigail this morning. So I'm excited to have people in person. This is October 2nd. It feels like a summer day outside. It couldn't be more gorgeous, but thankfully, we have a place that we can do yoga outside. And I thank Gary for having us here. Hi, Aria. So come join us on the mat. All righty. Oh, you know what I didn't bring? I didn't bring my meditation pillow. Oh, well. Let's go ahead and find our easy seated pose. Whatever is your easy seated pose. So Stephen has incredibly open and flexible hips. He never seems to mind any of these ones down here low like this. And he can lay, as you saw, he laid all the way back there and reclined hero. Oh, I can't, I could lay it, but my SI joints would revolt. So I don't do that one. <laughs> so, so you find your comfortable position. And I invite you now to just come onto the mat fully, come onto the mat physically, come onto the mat with your heart, your emotions, and your mind. Take a moment to check your posture by drawing your shoulders back and face so that they are over your hips. Draw your cranium so that it's aligned over your shoulders. Going for an open energy channel where your breath can flow freely up and down your spine. Now go ahead and draw your shoulders up to your ears on your inhale. And on your exhale, draw your shoulders together and back. Go ahead and straighten out your arms. Take any hand mudra of your choosing and just start to get into your breath. Shining your heart center towards the sky. Breathing in and out slowly. Using the belly for your breathing or your diaphragm. Take notice of your breathing. Is it shallow? Can you deepen your breath? Can you fill up your entire cavity when you inhale. And when you exhale, you descend it all the way down to the base of your spine. When you inhale, can you grow it all the way to the crown of your head? And as you exhale, can you exhale with control? Go ahead and take a full inhale again. And then fully exhale. One more inhale. And then exhale. Go ahead and flutter your eyes open. <clears throat> In honor of the crown chakra, which is our focus of our class this week, we're gonna do a breathing technique that helps clear the sinuses, helps bring clarity, helps draw some attention to our face, Ajna, the third eye, and Sahasrara, the crown chakra. So we're going to do what's called alternate nostril breathing or Nadi Shadana breathing. So, I'm here. so go ahead. okay, we can't, we can't concentrate if you're doing that, Aria. <laughs> so I've put up that challenge for animals and yoga. Aria is going to make the challenge. Okay, so what I want you to do is take your hand and create like a letter Y. And it's easier physically, even if just your index and your middle finger are touching the base of your palm and letting your ring finger kind of hang out there, given the one eye winky. And then take your thumb out to the side, take your pinky out to the side, turn your hand towards your face. 
So what you're gonna do is you're going to compress your right nostril with your thumb. You're gonna exhale out of your left nostril and then inhale. Hold it at the top, then change sides, compressing your left nostril with your pinky and then exhale out of the right. Fully inhale. Hold and switch sides, exhale. Inhale. Hold and switch sides, exhale out of the right. Inhale. Hold, switch sides, exhale out of the left. Inhale. Hold, switch sides, exhale out of the right. Inhale. Hold and switch sides, exhale out of the left. Inhale. Hold, switch sides, exhale out of the right. Inhale. Hold, switch sides, exhale out of the left. Inhale. Hold, switch sides, exhale out of the right. Inhale. Hold, switch sides, exhale out of the left. Inhale. And let's switch sides again. Exhale out of the right. Inhale. Switch sides and final exhale out of the left. Go ahead and drop your right hand. Close your eyes. Take a moment to observe. Observe the way you feel. Observe the way your breathing may have changed because of that. Nadi Shodhana breathing is really good for balancing out the energies in your body. You can balance the masculine and the feminine, the left with the right, your sun and your moon. It helps calm the nervous system. It helps energize your respiration. And indeed, it helps clear the sinuses, making room for clarity of thought, clarity of sight. And with that greater clarity, we have opportunity, opportunity to turn inward, and opportunity to connect with that which is above us and all around us. Let's go ahead and integrate some breath with movement by rising our hands on the inhale. And then exhale our hands out and down. Inhale our hands out and up. Exhaling out and down. And then inhale out and up again. And then on your exhale, hinging forward from your hips, go ahead and reach your hands out in front of you. And when you've reached as far as you can, you can place them on the ground. Go ahead and draw the crown of your head forward as you begin to descend down towards your mat. Your arms can be in any position that you like. More importantly, is your heart center lifted? Are you reaching forward? Are you trying not to round your back? I want you to feel this stretch along the back of your right thigh, on the back of your right hip. 
And only when you feel that it's right, you can reach forward and maybe still keep your shoulders up as you draw your heart center towards the mat. Inhale, rise up and walk back. Switch your feet orientation. So whichever foot is in front is now in back. Maybe readjust your sukhasana so that your sits bones are in equal contact with the ground. Inhale your hands up. Exhale your hands down. Inhale them up. Exhale out and down. And then inhale your hands up again. Exhaling forward, hinging from your hips, keeping a nice neutral spine, lifting up your heart center. When you've gone as far as you can, then lower your hands on the ground and then draw your heart center down while keeping your shoulders up. Maybe reaching forward if that works out for you. Still keep your shoulders lifted so that you can reduce rounding of the spine. Go ahead and rise up on the inhale, walking back. First opening of the day, we go slow to start, but it won't stay that way. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take our tabletop position. I'm gonna turn to the side so that I can show you the kind of alignment that you want in this position. So first of all, you want your knees about the same distance apart as your hip bones. So not your outer hips, but your inner hips, right? You want your arms firmly underneath your shoulders. Go ahead and draw your shoulder blades together on your spine so that you're widening your collarbone, drawing your heart center forward as you draw your tailbone backward, which naturally pulls your belly button up to the spine. So go ahead and just enjoy that alignment for a moment. Enjoy the lengthening of your side bodies. Enjoy the strength this pose brings to you when you do all of that. Inhale into cow, dropping your udders, rising up your heart center, rising up your sits bones. Exhale, drawing your belly button up into cat as you draw your back up to the sky. Inhale into cat. And then exhale into, I'm sorry, inhale into cow, exhale into cat. <laughs> sorry about that, everybody. Inhale into cow. Exhale into cat. Inhale into cow again. And then exhale into a neutral spine. Pick up your left leg behind you. Pick up your right arm in front of you. Draw your arm bone into your right shoulder socket. Draw your leg bone into your left hip socket. Continue to draw your belly button up your spine. And now that you've created this Centralize, strengthening, go ahead and extend with your limbs, still maintaining that alignment. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. One more inhale, exhale. Inhale, lift up the left leg and the right hand and then drop both of them down. Inhale your right leg up with your left arm up. Again, draw your arm bone into the shoulder and draw your thigh bone into your hip. Drawing your belly button up as you raise up your right leg, using the strength of the muscles in the back of the leg. Inhaling and exhaling deeply. Going for extension only after we have established the strong foundation. One more inhale. Exhale. Inhale, rise up the leg and the hand and then drop them both down. Go into cow on the inhale. And then exhale into cat. Inhale into cow. 
Exhale, neutralize the spine back in tabletop. Lift up your left foot in your right hand again and reach behind and grab your left foot with your right hand, kicking it back into it. As you kick your foot into your hand, creating an arch in the spine, opening up your right shoulder, opening up the heart, opening up that left hip. One more inhale. Exhale, release that with control, allowing your hand and knee to return. Lift up the right leg and the left hand. And on your exhale, go ahead and reach behind. Grab that right foot, kicking into your hand. The more you kick, the more you rise your leg. The more you arch your spine, the more you open up the heart center. One more inhale. And then exhale, release those down. One more inhale into cow. And then exhale into cat. Inhale into a neutral spine. Lift them up again. You can take that variation I showed you. You can stay like this or you can join me in awkward airplane. Drawing your right leg to the, uh, right arm to the side, right foot forward, creating a cross with your body. Allowing your left leg to hover in space. Your right arm is perpendicular to the body. Your palm is facing behind. Your toes are facing forward. You might be shaking. <laughs> Inhale. Exhale, return them back, front to back. Release them down to the ground. Inhale your right leg and your left hand up. Take the prior variations if you want, or join me in awkward airplane, drawing your left arm to the left, bringing your right leg forward, toes facing forward, palm facing back. One more inhale, and then exhale, return them back. Place your left hand on the ground, right knee down, Inhale into cow. <coughs> Exhale into cat. <coughs> Excuse me, everybody. It is dry out here and my water is in the car. <coughs> Inhale up. And then exhale to a neutral spine. <coughs> Sorry about that. Let's go ahead and sit back on our feet for just a moment. <coughs> Stretching out our feet. Our feet are ever so important. We must remember that our feet are very important. And when we don't stretch our feet, when we don't stretch them out, the fascia becomes adhered. You might see plantar fasciitis. You might see falling arches. You might see that familiar shuffle of older people that have lost their balance. So the key to a healthy posture the key to healthy walking and fitness is also to have good healthy feet. So we must stretch out the bones of our feet every day. Go ahead and grab the back of your heels. Lean into that by placing your crown on the floor into rabbit. Centralize all of your strength, pulling on your heels, pulling in. Crown on the ground, but don't put weight on it. One more inhale, exhale, rise up, separate the heels and sit down in between them in hero pose. Another opportunity to show the love to the feet, my summer feet at that, I might add. I bathe my feet every night, but I'm, I'm barefoot so much right now. <laughs> and go ahead, massage your feet with your thumbs, squeeze your heels, maybe press on each of your toe beads. It's important to show the love to your feet. Now here in Hero Pose, if you want to lay back and recline, as Stephen often does, you may, or you might even join me in kind of going forward a little bit. This still opens up the hips, but just in a different way. To each their own, know your body in yoga, know your options, be comfortable taking them. <laughs> Go ahead and rise up. 
Last week we did Ajna and the focus of Ajna is trusting your intuition, which means trusting yourself. Return to tabletop, tuck your toes and move back into your first downward facing dog of the day. Focus on drawing your hips up and back as you push the mat away with your hands, drawing your shoulders down your back and away from your ears. Widen your stance as much as you feel like you need to and keep your legs deeply bent if you need to to start. And then go ahead and gently open up your legs by pedaling at your feet, one straight up on the toes, straight, straighten the other, up on the toes, back and forth. Continue to push the floor away, keeping a beautiful straight line from your tailbone all the way to your wrist. A lot of times once we start moving in downward facing dog, we move our stance forward, remind ourselves to push the mat away and draw the shoulders down. Returning it so that your heart center can shine towards the ground, drawing your front of your body towards your thighs. Go ahead and rise up on your tippy toes. And then on your exhale, push away from the mat, moving your hips back, and then maybe allowing your heels to descend to the ground. Inhale, move forward into plank pose. Hold this for three breaths. Drawing your belly button up to your spine as you draw your heart center forward. Widen those collarbones. One more inhale. Exhale, lower Chaturanga Dandasana. And then inhale into Baby Cobra. And then on your exhale, lower down. Place your elbows underneath your shoulders in Sphinx Pose. Draw your heart center through, strengthening all of the muscles along either side of the spine. Just focus on clipping your elbows back and drawing your heart center through. It will naturally draw up. One more inhale. Exhale, lower down. Place your hands underneath your shoulders. Inhale, roll your shoulders up to your ears and back on your back as you rise up into Cobra. Exhale, drawing your elbows into the ribs, lower back down. Inhale, bring your shoulders up to the ears and back down as you rise up. And then exhale, lower back down. Inhale, bring the shoulders up and back as you rise up. And then on your exhale, tuck your toes again, move back into that downward facing dog. Observe the difference you may feel since we've been warming up the back and warming up the shoulders a little bit. Inhale, bring your right foot up to hip height. Exhale, bring knee to nose as you bring your foot all the way through. You may drop your knee or leave it high. It's up to you. Rising up into Anjaneyasana. Hold this for three breaths. Rise your hands up as you lower your hips. And then on the exhale, lower your hands. Take your right foot back into plank pose. Inhale. Exhale, lower down, then draw it through into upward facing dog. Exhale back into downward facing dog. Rise your right leg up again. Exhale at knee to nose all the way in, rising up. And then exhale, take your right hand down. Bring left foot to join the right. Inhale into a flat spine, exhale down. Inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale hands in a circle all the way down. Inhale. Exhale down. Inhale your hands up. Exhale, swan dive forward. Go ahead and return back to that plank pose and rise up into downward facing dog. Exhale your left foot up. Inhale, knees to nose. Bring it through on Janayasana. Rise up. Exhale, sink your hips. Inhale, rise your hands. Exhale, sink your hips. Inhale, rise your hands one more time. Exhale, circle hands down. Bring your left foot back, lower. Chaturanga Dandasana, inhale into upward facing dog. Exhale into downward facing dog. Inhale, lift your left leg up again. Exhale, knee to nose, bringing it all the way through. 
Rise up, Anjaneyasana. Exhale down. Bring it back into downward facing dog. Hold that for three breaths. One more inhale. Exhale, bend your legs. Walk up to your hands. Inhale into a flat spine. Exhale down. Inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale, circle your hands down. Observe how you're feeling. Now I'm going to turn a little bit towards the camera. Whoever's viewing can see it from a different angle. Inhale your hands down. Ex actually, exhale your hands down. Inhale them up. Exhale, swan dive forward. Inhale into a flat spine. Exhale, drop your hands. Take your right foot back again. You may drop your knee or you may leave it high. Rise up in Sanjaneyasana. Inhale. Exhale, hands down. Take your left foot back to join your right. Inhale. Exhale, lower Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale into upward facing dog. Exhale into downward facing dog. <sighs> Take your right foot up again. Exhale, knee to nose. Bring it in between your hands. Rise up. <sighs> Inhale, reach your hands up as you sink your hips low. Inhale one more time. Exhale, hands down. Take your left foot to join your right. Inhale into flat spine, exhale down. Inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale, hands to prayer. Inhale, exhale, hands down. Inhale, your hands up. Exhale, swan dive forward. Take your left foot back now. Rise up, Anjaneyasana. One more inhale as you reach. Exhale, circle your hands down. Take your right foot back to join your left. Inhale. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale into Upward Facing Dog. Exhale to Downward Facing Dog. Take your left foot up on the inhale, and then exhale, knee to nose as you bring it between your feet, rising up in Tanjaneyasana. Inhale, reach your hands up. Exhale, circle your hands down. Take your right foot to join your left. Inhale into a flat spine. Exhale down. Inhale, rise all the way up. And then exhale, hands to prayer. How's everybody doing? Okay, take those modifications as you need them. I'm going to trust you to know your body. Inhale. Exhale, our hands down. Inhale, our hands up. Exhale, swan dive forward. Inhale into a flat spine. Exhale down, take your right foot back. We're up in Anjaneyasana again. But this time we're gonna open up into warrior two. So go ahead and work this warrior. Pulling your shoulders together on your spine, sinking low, drawing your left hip or your left knee towards the outside of your left baby toes. Using these muscles, all back here to draw your gluteus muscles together on your sacrum to open up the hips. Looking out over your left fingertips. Thankful for this gorgeous day. Not too hot, very little breeze, and a fairly stable surface. <laughs> it's pretty crooked up there. Inhale. Exhale, shine your hands out to either side, extending, extending, inhale. Exhale, reverse back to peaceful warrior. You may go as deeply in this as you want, but keep your hips low and stationary. You can even curl back if that works for you. Draw your left shoulder back to further expose your heart center. One more inhale. Now on your exhale, you can take your left forearm to your knee or all the way to the ground as suits you. Take your left hand up to the air. If you want to deepen your pose, lower your hips by bending your left knee more deeply. Draw your right hand alongside your right ear and then draw your right shoulder back. Inhale, reach your right hand out. Exhale, reach it forward, circle it down, rise back up into warrior two. 
Let's straighten out that left leg. We're going to go ahead and do our triangle sequence here. Inhale. Exhale, reach your hand forward, allowing your hand to descend to the mat. Maybe it goes to your ankle. Maybe it goes to your shin. If you need a block, I can give you block. Okay. And then go ahead. Rise your left hand up to the sky. Some alignment cues. Your left thigh, imagine that somebody took a pair of hands and just turned your thigh inside of your hip socket, allowing your kneecap to face the ceiling. Tuck your tailbone. Draw your right shoulder back against that imaginary wall behind you, keeping your hips in alignment with your shoulders. Much going on. Now focus on smiling and shining your heart center up at the same time. One more inhale, reach your hands. And then on the exhale, turn towards your left foot. Drop your right hand to the ground, slightly bend your left knee as you bring your right foot forward just a little bit, straighten your left knee back out. Setting up for pyramid with your hands on the ground. Draw your shoulders back and down. It's okay to have your heart lifted in this pose. For alignment, draw your right hip forward as you draw your left hip back. And then when you feel ready, go ahead and descend down over that leg. One more inhale, fully exhale. You can place your hands on your hips or you can place them out in front of you. Straight arms as you rise up in one solid movement. Go ahead and remember again to draw your right hip forward as you bring your left hip back to keep your hips neutral. Rising up, creating lots and lots of space. And then on the exhale, bring your hands in a circle down, keeping that same length. If you want to, you can do reverse prayer behind your back. Go ahead and curl back over your hands. That means shifting your weight backwards a little bit. Draw your hips together to create stability. One more inhale. And then on your exhale, let's go ahead and descend over that left leg again, keeping our hands in prayer. This is a balancing challenge here, you guys. Not always easy to do this up and down in pyramid. Very nice. With control and care, release your hands. Frame your left foot, bend your left leg. Take your left hand out, away from your left foot diagonally, about 10 to 12 inches. Rise up on that leg, lifting your right leg up to hip height. Now, we're gonna open up that hip as we go into my favorite pose, half moon, balancing half moon. So initially, just keep your right hand on your hip, rise the right hip up to the sky, lift up your right leg so it's in alignment with the hip. It can be higher too. Draw your right shoulder back. And then when you've managed all of that opening of the right side, then lift up your hands. And you can curl into it like you're a flying bird. It's my favorite. I feel free in this pose. Continue to strengthen your left leg to give you stability. One more inhale, exhale. Take your right hand down. I almost lost my posture. <laughs> Bend your left leg, pulling your right leg behind you. Frame your right leg with your hands and move back into downward facing dog. Oh! You guys, that was awesome. That was fabulous. Which leg did we start with for Anjane Asana before? Was it our right or our left? It was our left, right? So we're going to do our right. So sorry about that. Sometimes I forget what side I'm on. Inhale our right leg up to the sky. Exhale, knee to nose as you bring your hand through. Rise up into Anjaneyasana again. 
<sighs> the power doesn't always mean fast. <laughs> Inhale, bring your hands up to the sky. Exhale, open to that warrior two. So go ahead and pivot your left foot down. There you go. And then when you're in warrior two, draw your shoulder blades together. If you want to increase the stability of your base, you'll draw your belly button into the spine underneath the ribs. You'll trail this right knee outward towards the toes and you'll engage all these muscles on your, on your butt, your gluteus muscles. You'll pull them together to open up your hips naturally. Ah. And then just breathe. Extend your hands as wide away from the center of your body as you can. Inhale. Exhale, reverse that to Peaceful Warrior. Keep your hips low as you rise your hand up high. You can even curl backwards if you want. One more inhale, reaching. And then on your exhale, you can either place your forearm on your leg, or you can go all the way down to the ground with your hand as we set up for side angle. So go ahead and raise your left arm up to the sky to increase the stretch, lower your hips by bending your right leg more deeply, and then draw your left hand, your left arm alongside your left ear, opening up the heart center. Continuing to breathe evenly in and out. One more inhale, reach. And then on the exhale, circle your hand down, back up into that warrior two. Inhale. And then exhale, straighten out your right leg. Ah, that side's working. Inhale. And then on the exhale, reach forward, allowing that right hand ultimately to descend. Remember what I said again, your cue for your thigh is like you're taking two hands and turning it upwards so that your kneecap is facing the sky. Tilt your left tailbone, or tilt your tailbone down, so tilt your left sits bone down. You only have one tailbone, not a left and a right. <laughs> Continuing to rotate your right thigh bone inside the hip socket. Draw your left shoulder back in space, pressing your body against that imaginary wall behind you. One more inhale, reach. And then on the exhale, go ahead and bring your left foot to the ground. Bend your right leg enough so that you can bring your left foot slightly forward. All toes are paint pointed forward. Keeping your hands on the mat, draw your shoulders down your spine. Drawing them away from the ears as you draw the crown of your head forward. Drawing your right hip back as you draw your left hip forward. This may be enough and this is okay. Pyramid pose is a strength pose. We get extension after strength. If you have to completely round your spine to lay down on your leg, it's better to stay up tall and continue to work the flexibility on the back of your legs to make further extension possible. But if you want to join me, you may start to descend. One of the cues to follow is drawing the shoulder blades onto the back as you go down. So lessen the rounding of the spine, lessen the pressure on your lower back. You can keep a micro bend also in your front leg. One more inhale. And on your exhale, you can either place your hands to your hips to rise up, or you can bring your hands out in front, straight up, and rise up in one continuous motion. <sighs> While you're here, work your base. Pull your right hip back. You can pull your left hip forward. Bring your belly button in and rise up out of your hips as far as you can, reaching, reaching, reaching. And on your exhale, bring your hands out, keeping that kind of length. Draw them behind your back in reverse prayer. 
inhale. And your exhale, go ahead and curl back. Keep your hips stationary as you curl back. And I just lost my balance. See, it happens to the best of us. <laughs> okay, putting more of your weight on your back foot, which can only be accomplished by creating that firm foundation in your hips. Inhale, and then on your exhale, start to fold forward, maintaining your hands in reverse prayer. If that works for you, you can release it if you want. And then go ahead and release your hands to the ground. Bend your right leg, trail your right hand out, eight to 10 inches from the outside of your baby toes, rise up. Left foot to hip height, leg straight behind you. Then take your left hip and open it up. Placing your hand on that hip, open it up. Continue to lift your leg so that it is at hip height or maybe even higher. Pushing your hip slightly forward to create that stable foundation, drawing your left shoulder back. And then when you've accomplished all that, then rise up your hand. Feel like the flowing eagle. You know, eagles only mate in flight. I just fell out. They cannot mate in captivity. But I always think about the eagles when I'm in this balancing half moon. One more inhale. Exhale, go ahead and lower that down. Did we do anything else? We didn't, did we? We, just, we went back to warrior. Ah, curl your hands down and move back into downward facing dog. Sorry, you guys, I'm moving so slow today <laughs> that I'm forgetting where I'm at in the sequence. Go ahead and push back into your warrior. Feel how you've extended your hamstrings on the back, particularly with the pyramid pose, triangle, and the balancing half moon. Ah. One more inhale, exhale, drop your knees to the ground and rise up into camel. We're gonna do camel next. Are your knees okay? You know, I have these groovy pads at home. I have to remember to bring when we're out here on this concrete. My knees don't suffer from the hard surface. I don't think his do, but I have to remember other people may. <laughs> so in camel, you have a few variations you can take. I'm gonna to turn to the side here. You can place your hands right on the back of your spine. That is totally acceptable. You can follow me as I, as I place them on my heels. You can also take a set of blocks and you can have your hands back here on the blocks, whatever works for you. You're gonna take the variations you want, but I usually do camel in varying degrees, three steps. So the first one we're gonna do is like creating our hands like paddles. I'm placing them right on those sacroiliac joints, fingers painted down. Rise your heart center up as high as you can go, drawing your shoulders together, drawing your elbows together, and then curl back. Draw your heart center up to the sky. Lifting up out of the hips. One more inhale. And then exhale, sit back down on your heels. Maybe just lay over your legs briefly in child's pose. Inhale, rise up again. Next variation, if you choose to take it, is tucking your toes, heels high up in space. Inhale, your hands up, rising up out of the hips, rising as high as you can, and then curling back. And then when it feels right, placing your hands on your heels, pressing your hips forward as you bring your heart center up to the sky. Open up your throat if you want. One more inhale. Exhale, bring chin to chest as you rise up, drawing in from the belly. Sit back down on your heels. 
and lay over in that child's pose. Inhale, rise up again. And there's, oh, I thought that was the motorcycles again. <laughs> they like their Saturday morning rides. Okay, so the next variation, I'm not gonna tuck my toes. I'm gonna leave my feet flat on the ground. Inhale, the hands up. Again, rising up out of the hips, out of the pelvis, creating as much space as you can. Inhale. And then on your exhale, start to rise your heart center to the sky, curling back. And then if it's available, reach for your heels. Drawing your heart center up as you draw your hips forward. One more inhale. And then on the exhale, tuck your chin, chin, chin to the chest, draw your belly button in as you sit back again on your heels and lean over your legs. Okay. So when we do these back bends coupled with forward bends, just take care. That's why I always cue you to have as much extension as possible because that extension is what keeps you from putting pressure on those discs on your spine. Inhale, rise up. Ah, let's go ahead. <laughs> I'm always moving around. I love the round mat. Okay, go ahead and move back into downward facing dog. Stretch it out as much as you can. Drawing your hip bones up to the sky and back. Drawing your heart center towards the mat. Drawing your body towards your thighs. Inhale. Exhale. Bend your legs and then hop up to your feet or walk. It's up to you. Inhale into a flat spine. Exhale down. Inhale all the way up. In honor of the crown chakra, we are going to do tree pose because it's a wonderful pose for connecting with the sky. Our tree branch is reaching out. It's just an, it's like a great pose. It should be in every single routine. It's playful, helps us concentrate, helps us have balance. So setting up for tree, let's talk about our foundation. Okay. Have roots. Feet are the roots that are connecting with the earth. One way that you know if you're connecting is you lift up all your toes. When you feel all three points of the triangle of the foot connecting, then lower those toes. Slightly bend your knees so that you can strengthen these muscles above the kneecap and pull your, your belly button in as you descend your tailbone slightly. Bring your shoulders up and back so they're stacked over the hip. Ta-da! You've arrived in Tadasana. It is out of this strong, stable base that we go into these balancing poses. So go ahead and set up your left foot. You have your variations in tree pose for your right foot. Turn your right knee out. You can have your toes on the ground if you want, framing your ankle with your foot, heel above the ankle. You can take your foot off the ground and just have your toes pointed down, but still framing the ankle. You can rise up and frame the calf or you can go all the way up to the top of the leg. There is a, another variation, but I tend not to show it because it's, for me, it just kind of forces my hips backwards, but that's the one where you lay your foot across the crease of your hip. So you find the one that works for you. But some balancing cues, push your hips forward as you push your left leg into your right foot. Use the muscles on the back of your hip to draw your right knee out. Drawing the belly button in, drawing the shoulders down. This is really like Tadasana with just our foot hanging out up in the sky. And if you feel ready, go ahead and rise up your tree limbs. Create as much extension and space by rising up as you can. You can do whatever you want now. You can take any arm position you want. I'm going to take the Gamukasana arms cow face arm where I clasp my left hand with my right fingers. Remember whatever you choose to keep your alignment of your cranium over the shoulders. And then if you want, 
You can even try another fun arm pose, go back into reverse prayer back there. That actually helps you balance because it draws your shoulders back together. Straightens out the spine, reminds us of that strong alignment. And then rise your hands up to the sky again. With control, let that right leg down. Maybe shake out your left leg. I saw, I saw him out of the corner of my eye. I'm like right on, Stephen's holding it. <laughs> Stephen's got it going down. And you were doing great too. You know, if you haven't done yoga in a while, and you will again, it's all about consistency. You know, honor where your body is. That's the thing about yoga. Yoga is not about how these poses look the way I do them or somebody else. It's about honoring your body, the integrity of the pose. Can you breathe? Can you keep alignment? That's what it matters. And you don't want to hurt yourself. Okay, set up our foundation on the right side. Take those variations of your choice. Toes on the ground, toes off the ground, foot wrapped around the shin, or if you choose, all the way to the top. All the way to the top is tricky if your clothes don't cooperate. So if you're gonna go all the way to the top, you've gotta to have clothes that aren't gonna move, okay? So sometimes we have to modify based on what we're wearing. I happen to have cooperative clothes today. So push your hips forward slightly, pushing the right leg into the left foot, drawing your left knee back, using the muscles on the back of your hips that, that are on either side of the sacrum. Inhale your hands up to the sky. These are your tree limbs. Create as much extension, getting as tall as you can in this pose, remembering you're like the tree. Maybe you feel 400 years old today, I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe like the Methuselah tree, maybe you feel a couple thousand years old. But a tree can bend and flow with the breeze and the wind, but the roots stay stable. If you can, take any variation of arms of your choosing. I'm gonna do Gamakasana on the other side. Again, remembering, draw your cranium backwards. Don't crunch your shoulders down. And then I'm gonna go into my reverse prayer. You do whatever you want with your arms. There's never, a, there's never a downside to drawing your shoulders back and down, everybody. In society, we round them too much. So any opportunity you have to do that is a good one. Let's go ahead and release our hands back overhead. And then with control, release your left foot. Ah, do a little shimmy to shake it out. It's a long time standing on one leg, but you did it. So one final standing pose today. If you want these blocks, you may use them because we're gonna go ahead and do warrior three. And you might want them. Now I'm gonna advise you to go ahead and just, instead of taking your hands off the mat, use those blocks to keep your alignment and your strength. Any height that works for you. So here we are, everybody. This next pose is sometimes called uh, the heart attack pose to prevent you from having heart attacks in the future. Why? Because it raises your heart rate so much in a short space of time. And it comes down just as quickly. So first I want you to take your right foot behind you, just toes pointed on the floor. Bring your right hand, your hands up and overhead. Clasp them, create, create like that steeple with your fingertips. All right, create a lot of extension. And what we're gonna do, just like a teeter-totter, as we go into warrior three, the right leg is gonna come up as the torso goes down, keeping our hands extended in front. Inhale your hands high up to the sky. And then exhale, start to descend. When you arrive, create as much length as you can by drawing the hands forward and drawing the foot back. Try not to sink into that left hip. With control, rise up all in one motion. And I'm falling out because of the hill. And then exhale your hands down. <laughs> 
it's easier to do on a completely flat surface. There's still a little bit of grade here. Next side is easier though, because you know what to expect. So placing our hands together, our feet together, hands down. I do this all the time, by the way. You have to mind read with me. I will often say just do what you think I meant, because I do this hand foot thing. I haven't broken the habit yet. <laughs> Take your left foot back behind you, toes pointed behind you. Take your hands up and above. Whatever way your fingers were crossed before, reverse it. So if they were left middle finger in the front, put the right middle finger in the front. Still creating that cute little chapel, little steeple with your fingers. So inhale your hands up high to the sky. And then on the exhale, bring up your left leg, bring down your torso. One continuous motion. Try not to sink into your right hip, rise out of the hip. When you've arrived, make your arms out in front as far as you can, left foot out behind as far as you can, creating extension, creating strength. Inhale, rise up, one continuous motion. And there, I lost it again. Ah, exhale your hands down. I think I think I think that uh, Stephen did better than I did. <sighs> okay, so now we're gonna descend to the floor. <laughs> Inhale, our hands up. Exhale, hands down. Inhale into a flat spine. Exhale down. Place your hands on the ground. Move back into a plank. Lower Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale into Upward Facing Dog. Exhale to Downward Facing Dog. Enjoy this. It is the last one. Well, it may not be the last one. Second to last one. Ah. Pushing your hips back in space. Enjoy that. Inhale, rise your right leg up as high as you want. And then on the exhale, Bring it to the outside of your right foot. You can lower your knee. We're just gonna work right now on opening up the hips. You can just do the back and forth. You can take lizards. You can do whatever you want. Sometimes at the end of a strengthening routine like this, I'm not in the mood to add more strength once I've arrived at the floor. <laughs> so you do whatever works for you. I do encourage a twist though. So leave your left hand on the floor, take your right hand and push outward. Heel on the inside of your right knee. Twist your right shoulder back in space as you open up that leg, opening up your left front of your left hip. Very nice. And then when you feel ready, go ahead and walk. Your right foot to the left as we set up for pigeon. So everybody's hips are different. I've never been able to have my shin parallel like him <laughs> to the front of the mat. Okay. Oh, you start off that way. I didn't yeah, even start I mean, off that way. Yeah. Go ahead and rise up. Tent your fingers. Rise up, bringing your heart center up to the sky. And then exhale, descend slowly over your right leg. I start off on my elbows initially. My right side is never as open as the left. I accept that. Here I do yoga at least four days a week. If I have private students, it's five or six. And yet my body hasn't really changed. <laughs> I'm stronger, I'm better aligned, but not always more flexible. So we have to respect where we're at. We have to respect what yoga really is, which is not about pretzeling. It's not about, you know, how wild can you look in the pose? It's about integrity. It's about breathing. It's about using the asanas to settle the brain, to settle your mental state so that you can become more introspective, so that you can know yourself better. so that you can live a more purposeful existence in harmony with yourself, in harmony with the world around you. 
If you want to reach your hands out and further fall down, you can, you might be more open. So I really try in my classes to talk about living a more yogic life off the mat. Because that's what it's really all about. You can try variations while you're down here. I'm gonna thread my left arm underneath my right and lay down on my left shoulder. That will further increase the stretch of the right hip. Not everybody can do this. It's quite a deep twist. And then I'm gonna choose to reach behind and grab my right foot and draw my right heel into my left and then my, I'm sorry, draw, grab my left foot with my right hand and pull my left heel into my left hip. That's a lot of stretching going on there. I'm gonna release out of that. With control, let's all rise up. If you wanna do one last stretch before we exit out, reach behind with your left hand and grab your left foot and draw it towards your body. Oh, look at how flexible she is over there. So, so your quadriceps are flexible. That's great though. That's good for your knees. Good healthy quads keeps healthy knees. That's why I do this because the more we stretch out the top of our thigh, the better our knee health. And women are prone to knee injuries as we age. Look at Steven over there being all strong and cool. He's awesome. Okay, let's go ahead and with control, tuck our left toes, moving our hips back, drawing our belly button in, lifting up our leg and moving back slowly into downward facing dog. Allowing the blood to rush back into that right leg. All right, go ahead and rise up your left leg as high as you want to go and then take it to the outside of your left hand, dropping your right knee. You can take lizard if you want, I'm not in the mood. <laughs> but there goes Steven, man. Steven wants it stronger, longer. He's a true power yogi. But it's an honor to have Steven as a friend. It's an honor to have him in my classes. <laughs> and I'm so pleased that Abigail has joined us today. She may never come back after this, but <laughs> new to the mountains. Yes, and welcome. Take your left hand and push it on the inside of your left knee, stretching out. Now you can take the twist by drawing your left shoulder back, drawing your right hip forward. So Stephen does sound meditation. Go ahead and walk your right foot over. And Stephen's music is phenomenal. So today I posted the link for the Big Bear Yoga Festival. So there are eight sessions. Stephen has a music session. I have a power, so I have a yoga session, a, a, a half of the Nyasa flow. You don't have to do them today. I mean, unless they are taking down the YouTube link, which I doubt they are, I think you can probably throughout the week pick one a day. There's a couple of good meditation sessions. Actually, there's four meditation sessions. There's Stevens. There's another woman. I can't remember her name. I know I've met her. Um, she's doing singing bowls and gongs. There's a gentleman who I've never met, but he's, he does the master ceremonies and he has another sound meditation session. And there's Stevens. I just said Steven twice. I said there were four, right? Well, the opening ceremony kind of is one too. And then there's my flow, then Lisa Ann is doing a flow. And then there's somebody else that's doing a, a flow that uh, peaks to a handstand. So there's some good, good stuff going on. It was an honor to be asked to join this year. Okay, go ahead and rise up your heart center. And then exhale, you can go ahead and lay down over your leg. 
So honestly, today's routine has a lot of elements of the flow that I put into my video for the Big Bear Festival. So what I tend to do with my yoga is I carry elements from each class forward. So Monday morning is the chair yoga, which is great for people that want to learn routines, you know, for doing a little bit of yoga at work in their chairs. It's also good for people with balancing issues. It's also good for the yogi that wants to really just start off the week calmly and focus on extension without having to worry about balancing. I, I've, I've done some work on improving posture by being in a chair. Then Wednesday morning, we have gentle yoga on the floor. So that's when we start to, you know, introduce some of these moving asanas. And then Thursday night is half of vinyasa flow. So it's a step down from the power flow. And then Saturday morning is the power flow. Today we kind of went slow actually. But some good strength elements in it. So the power flow is either fast and vigorous, last week's was, or focusing a lot on strength poses, long holds. And then Monday night, free meditation. So you can continue to play around with your pigeon. I'm going to twist to my left, lay down on my right shoulder. Mm. And I'm going to reach back, grab my right foot with my left hand, and I'm going to continue to engage that twist. Drawing my heel into my right hip. And then I'm going to release that quietly and slowly. I'm going to go ahead and rise up. And then I'm going to reach back, grab my right foot, and draw it into my right hip. And release that with control. Place your hands down in front of the mat. Lift up off the mat using your belly button. Pulling up to the spine. Pull your hips back. So it's preferable to use your core muscles to pull your leg up rather than draw your head up. You could see your head up friction. And then just reach slowly back into your downward facing dog. End of the day. Make the most of it. Extend as far as your. You can go ahead and lower down on your knees. And we turn it around and sit on our bump. <sighs> so now we're going to move into the meditation portion of of the day. So go ahead and flatten out your legs. Well, you don't have to flatten that, you can leave them up. Just go ahead and start to lay down on your mat. Uh, before we fully lay down, go ahead and lift up your legs and go ahead and take a happy baby. So grabbing the edge sides of your feet with your hands, drawing your arms up on the inside of your legs. Drawing your knees towards your shoulders, keeping your tailbone tucked on the ground. You can rock your baby. And just enjoy this beautiful, gentle spinal stretch. And then you can release that, place your legs on or your feet on the ground. If you want to go ahead and do a couple of reclining twists, you can. So I'm dropping my knees to the right, looking out over my left arm. And then lifting them up and dropping them to the left, looking out over my right arm.
And then find your way into Shavasana. So you can have your feet on the ground and your knees bent if you prefer that. You can open up your legs into butterfly, Baddha Panasana, bound angle pose. If you want, you can stretch your legs out in front of you. It's all about personal preference and finding your comfortable place. You might lift up your some way that you create space for your neck and your upper back. And just start to focus on your breath, slowing down your breath. Turning your attention inward. Observe what kinds of things you see in your closed eyes. What kind of colors might be coming across? What kind of shapes, maybe lights? As you lay here focusing on that, I want you to tell each part of your body, starting with the crown, to relax. Descending down, relaxing your face and all your facial muscles, relaxing the chin, relaxing your neck, your shoulders, your collarbones. Relaxing all the muscles of your chest and your arms and your hands. Relaxing your hips, your upper thighs, your knees and your calves. Relaxing your ankles and your feet. Continue to breathe gently. Controlled in, controlled out. And draw your attention to the crown chakra. Imagine it as a thousand petaled lotus. Out of each petal is a light a light that is reaching up, a light that might be reaching out to the sides, diagonally, maybe even down. Each of those lights is like a laser. You can imagine those lights multicolored, Maybe they're changing all the time. Changing from white to purple, to orange, to blue, to red, back to white. Maybe each strand of light is its own color. Maybe all of them are white. The light represents your connection to that which is above you, to the divine, to the creator of everything. But the light also connects you to everything that is around you, to the people, to the animals, to the earth, to the plants, That light allows you to shine out your love, your intention. That light allows you to make connection. Rest in the beauty of that knowledge that you do not walk alone. That you are connected 
with everything that's around you. You are part of this really big universe. Continue to rest in Shavasana for the next five minutes. I will bring you back in with my voice. Wherever you have drifted off to, I invite you now to return back to this present moment. Maybe integrate a little bit of movement by wiggling your toes and fingers. Maybe shrug your shoulders, maybe take a stretch. When you feel ready, go ahead and roll over to one side or the other. Pause for a moment.
and then moving very slowly, please join me in Sukhasana. Mm -hmm. Let's take an inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, our hands up. Exhale them out and down. And then one more inhale, hands out and up. Exhale, bring your hands in prayer to Ajna, your third eye. And then bring them back down to the heart center, Anahata. Bow your head. Remember, through our crown chakra, we connect with that which is above and that which is all around us. And we are reminded that we do not walk alone, that we are connected to our universe, to our planet, and to all that inhabit it. Thank you for coming today to the treasure box. The light in me joins the light in you. The yogi in me honors the yogi in you. Namaste.